No, I just turned mine off, so I think we're good. It was a little reverb from that. All right, good morning, everyone. I am so excited to see you. We are live on the Facebook group and, of course, recording this meeting, and it's so good to have you guys with me, and we're going to just jump right in. So I'm curious, um, a few of you have been with me for a couple weeks now, and I was wondering if you have any feedback or ahas or progress to share. Has anything that we've been talking about made an impact in your life? Jill, go ahead. I'd love for you to share. Yeah, I love that um, it was a circle and it was all the things that are so important in life and where we have to kind of think through. I used to, I did it many, I don't know, it feels like a hundred years ago, <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it gives a perspective of long-term, short-term, in the week, in the day, Mm -hmm. So it so it was a nice reminder. So I want to thank you for doing that. That was oh, right on. Great. Yeah. I'm so glad you were able to do that. Good. All right. Anyone else have anything they want to share before we get started? Okay. So if you do have anything to share along the way, you can use the chat. And I also will come back on and give everyone an opportunity who would like it to share. And if you are with us on Facebook, um, you can also put some comments into um, the stream there. All right, I'm trusting everyone can see my slides. Just give me a nod if you can. Awesome. All right, so uh, welcome back. We are going to uh, talk today about uh, removing our limiting beliefs. That was something that came up a few times, and some people showed interest in that. And honestly, who really couldn't do a little bit of work on that, right? Because uh, I think that if we're honest with ourselves and each other, we all have something that we tell ourselves that is not true and that limits us. So that's what this morning's uh, Monday Morning Mojo is about. So if you're joining me for the first time, I, I really am excited that you're here because my goal for this session was to change the dialogue around Monday mornings and give everyone a dose of inspiration, maybe a dose of reality, uh, something to focus on for the week that would help them move forward and grow. And, um, you know, I, I have a lot of fun doing this. It gives me a lot of purpose, too, uh, because I do put some time into planning the topics, and I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. So um, we are going to talk a little bit, oops, we're going to talk a little bit about your mindset today and uh, maybe the story that you're telling yourself. So if you would like to take notes, um, that's always a good idea because um, you can certainly hang out here and just enjoy the conversation every Monday morning, or you can dig a little deeper, dive a little deeper and do some of the work or exercises that I suggest. That's totally up to you. I am a coach, so it's hard for me not to do that. So uh, that's, that is uh, a lot of the resources that you'll find here. And everything is shared on the Facebook page and there's things in the files that you can go back and look at from past weeks as well. So believing in yourself honestly really is the first uh, step to success. And I don't even know if it's really such a secret. It shouldn't be anyway. Um, the problem, I think, for a lot of us, uh, the number one problem that keeps us from winning or hitting our goals is the way that we see and the way that we think about ourselves. And in, in that lack of belief, and it limits us. So I think we get what we expect. I think that whatever we believe is true, um, and that's the key, right? So whatever you tell yourself, you're always going to be right. So if you tell yourself that you don't have limits and that you can really achieve anything you put your mind to, um, it's not just a cute saying. It really is something that will kick in for you. But if you tell yourself that you can't do something, then your mind will support you and everything around you will um, basically provide evidence to tell you you're right. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of stop and, and become a little bit more aware, a little bit more conscious of our thoughts and feelings so that we can really change the conversation that we're having. Um, because your belief is really the key to whether you are limiting yourself or pushing yourself forward. So how do we, you know, really try to change this conversation, right? So the, the first thing is, you know, really looking at what 
our thoughts are because believing in yourself is a choice. It's probably an attitude you've developed over time. So regardless of where the beliefs have come from, regardless of how long you've been walking around with them, it is up to you if you want to change it and you can change it. You know, that's the one thing I want to make clear too. You, you don't, you have power and you have the ability to make those choices. You are not, um, it, this is not a hopeless cause. So it is your responsibility to make a decision about this. And that's where it starts. It starts with making a decision. So how do you take charge of that self-concept? and your beliefs, right? And, and really make some change. So we're gonna share some ways that you can change your beliefs today. And uh, it's probably easier than you might imagine. And it really starts with changing some of the language that you're using, right? So if you're going to be successful, you have to give up this phrase, I can't. And uh, I know that we sometimes are on like an auto dialer with our words and our thoughts. We're on this like loop. And so again, the first step is awareness. And if you can remove this, I can't from your vocabulary, you will find that this is going to propel you forward because just that, just saying I can't takes your power away. It disempowers you immediately. You've made a statement. I can't, so there's no more conversation. There's no more trying, right? So why would we want to put that limit on ourselves and, and put ourselves in this tiny box? So by removing this, um, we can hopefully move forward towards our goals. So instead, we have to choose to say we can, or even if you say, I will, I just may not know how to get there, that's fine. But to tell yourself that you can't do something or to go as far as to even tell yourself that you're not good enough to do it or you're not capable enough or smart enough or rich enough or pretty enough or whatever this dialogue is, again, you're just telling yourself, you know, immediately that this is out of reach. So nothing in the universe is going to line up to give it to you. So you can do anything you put your mind to. Write that down. I can do anything I put my mind to. If the, the thought and the image is in your mind, you own it. It's been given to you probably by a divine nature. And therefore, it's your thought. So that means you have the power to accomplish it. I don't daydream about being a neurosurgeon. I never have. So it's not my dream and it's not something I'm going to do. But I've dreamt about teaching and coaching and in different ways over the course of my life and, and connecting with people. So it was a seed that was planted for me. So whatever you put your mind to, you can do. What you believe is what you will think. That's a great statement to write down. What you believe is what you think and what you think is what you will say. What you believe is what you think, what you think is what you will say and what you think and say is what you will do and who you will become. What you think and say is what you will do and who you will become, and that is what brings results. It all goes right back up to beliefs. Beliefs are the rules we live by, right? Whatever you believe to be true becomes how you act and becomes how you think and becomes what you say. So they're the rules you live by. So therefore, when it shapes your thoughts and it shapes your actions, and that's what brings results, then the results you're getting or what you see around you in your life right now is a result of what you think. And it's a result of what you believe. So if we want to see change, real, real sustainable change, we have to change what we believe. See, a lot of people, when they want to make sustainable change, will start to change what they're doing. So for instance, if I wanna lose weight, right? Some of us will start by changing what we eat and changing how we exercise. And we may get results for a little while, but in some cases the results are not sustainable because we never change what we think about ourselves or about food or the relationship that we have. So it really has to come from your beliefs. That's where change starts. So what you tell yourself every day will either lift you up or tear you down. 
Whatever you tell yourself every day will either lift you up or tear you down. So what is the conversation going on in your head? Because beliefs are just basically a thinking pattern that have built up over years. And they form this mental image. You know, we talked about visualization last week. So they form this mental picture. And it becomes the truth to you, right? It becomes the truth to you. So it defines who we think we are and how we perceive the world. And then eventually what we think we're capable of. It may have started when you were really young. Um, that's where a lot of our beliefs come from. They could come from early childhood programming, right? And that is true for most of us. And this is not about let's blame my mom and dad. Uh, it's just that we are always shaped by everything happening around us. And, and up until the age of 25, our brain is not fully developed. So those are really formidable years for human development. And so anything that we are seeing, anything we are experiencing, anything we're being told um, from a young age can develop the story about ourselves. And I guarantee you there's at least one person listening to me right now who's saying, oh my gosh, <laughs> that started when I was very young. I think I get it, right? So the story develops and it creates this image about what we think of ourselves or how we see ourselves, uh, what we tell ourselves. And it can, it can be either really empowering or it could be somewhat limiting. So everything that we've experienced and, and it's still programming us. I mean, in those formidable years up until we're 25 create a lot of, of deep programming, but we're being programmed all the time. Anything that we're seeing, anything that we're hearing, anything that we're reading, anything that's being said to us is all coming as as bits of information and we can only grab onto so much. So the programming continues, right? So what we have to do is change the programming and we can change that by really looking at, taking a hard look probably at where we're spending our time, what we're reading, uh, what we're telling ourselves and doing this four step process I'm gonna share with you now on removing limiting beliefs that are not serving you. At least they're not serving you in the sense that they're moving you forward. Um, so equipped with the right knowledge in this process, I think anyone can overcome any limiting belief that they have. I've helped a lot of people through my coaching do this. I've done it for myself. Um, all of our inner dialogue and outer conversations, as I said, right, should be aimed at getting us where we want to be. All of our inner dialogue and outer conversations should be aimed at getting us where we want to be. So replacing any thought or belief that is keeping you from that or keeping you from reaching your goals and replacing it with an empowering thought or belief will take you so much further in life. And that's really where I want you to go. I want you to pursue your wildest dreams. So, oops. So there is this four step process that I want to share with you. And uh, we'll go through this um, and give you an opportunity to write this down. This is being recorded, so you can play this back as many times as you want to. Um, it's pretty simple. It may not be super easy, but it's pretty simple. Um, here is the four-step process. And I've talked about the first step a few times now, and that's awareness. You can't change, you can't change something you don't recognize, right? You, you, if you don't acknowledge it, you can't change it. So you have to be aware. So the first step is really to get clear and identify what the limiting belief is that you want to change. And you want to get clear and you want to get specific too. And I will say this might take a little time and work. You might need to journal on this, right? You might need to actually schedule some alone time to do this. The second step is determine how the belief limits you. Get really super honest with yourself. Go as deep as necessary to really identify, like, how is this holding you back? And you might even ask yourself, what is it costing you? The third step is to decide how you would rather feel, how you rather would want to show up. 
<clears throat> excuse me, how you want to act, how you want to think, right? What is the alternative, the positive alternative to that limiting belief? <clears throat> And then, excuse me, the fourth step is to create a turnaround statement. <clears throat> create a turnaround statement that affirms or gives you permission to be or act or think in the way that you know is what you desire. And make them clear, specific, not too long of a statement, right? Because your, your mind is taking commands from you all the time. Your brain, your mind is here to serve you. It wants to please you. It's here to protect you, which is a whole other conversation we can have about why this limiting beliefs is, is still hanging out with you because somehow your brain has determined it's protecting you somehow. And I'm sure if you do a little um, soul searching on that, you'll see what I mean. So you just want to give your mind clear, concise orders because it is looking to, to serve you. If, you. if it's too much, it, 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 get, it will get, literally get lost. The command will get lost in all the words. So make your, your statement pretty succinct. So remember, all your inner dialogue and outer conversations need to be aimed at where you want to be. So with that turnaround statement, that's the goal. That's the vision, right? So if you could continue to replace any thought of relief, that was keeping you from your goals with something much more empowering, what could your life look like? And for some of you, you may even want to just choose one area of your life at a time to work on this. Now, I will say some of you are going to be able to do this on your own and others may struggle. Um, if I can help you, reach out to me. Sometimes these, this, this process of overcoming limiting beliefs can be for some people, more effective when they have a coach or someone to kind of help them work through it. So remember that new turnaround statement should be very positive. And you, you will know if it's right when you feel a, um, a reaction to it. When you feel really excited, when you feel joyful and inspired, that's the right statement for you. That turnaround statement is going to have a a uh, physical effect on you, okay? And you wanna affirm it by repeating it throughout the day. So once you come up, that this is where we come up with affirmations, right? So I want you to create a statement in the present tense that is positive as if you're already there. And it, it could start with the words I am, and I've shared, I think I shared my blog post on affirmations on our Facebook page, you can find it there. Um, and if you can repeat that to yourself multiple times a day, if you can put it up in front of you wherever you spend most of your time, um, if you write it in your favorite journal, and again, read that throughout the day, that's new programming. You're, you're going to feed your mind with this new positive language, and if you anchor that with um, even reading different books on, you know, the subject matter that is relevant to your goals or subject matter that is helping you get clarity around your purpose and, and something that is really stretching you in terms of personal development, you'll find that that is all going to work to your advantage. So as you practice this affirmation, here are a couple of questions. And again, I'll put this on the Facebook page and you can watch the recording. Um, but I just wanted to mention um, that as you practice this new um, statement, this new affirming statement, it will be natural for some of you to find that you're going to combat it, right? Because some of you are dealing with removing a limiting belief that has been there for maybe decades. So you're going to, you may take a step back and I just want you to prepare for that. So it's not uncommon for you to become aware of some competing thoughts, right? And you, you, your mind may come up with some objections, like as you say this new positive affirming statement, you might immediately hear yourself saying, yeah, right. I don't know, this is, I don't know if this is gonna work, right? You fall right back into that negative self-talk. So I just want you to know that you have to be prepared for that, right? That's a contingency plan. So you have to be prepared for that little voice on your shoulder to say, who are you kidding? This is never going to work. Stop doing this. So I want you to know it is normal, but we have to we have to work through that. 
So you may need to um, create another process where you can just, again, raise your awareness. It's just becoming an inner coach and uh, don't ignore those feelings, right? Because when you ignore something, they tend to persist. You have to meet it head on. So as those um, competing thoughts come in, you may want to, if, if you can at that moment, kind of take a little time out, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Uh, remember those types of things, deep breathing a few times changes your state. So it's a pattern interrupt for your brain. So deep breathing is a really good way to kind of take a good time out mentally and physically. And then you might want to ask yourself some questions like this, like, okay, what am I feeling right now? Why, why am I allowing, or why is this thought showing up, right? Um, the second question you can ask yourself is, could I welcome and allow it? In other words, could you say to yourself, okay, I'll accept this thought for a minute because it's part of the process, right? Because re remember, what you resist just persists. Um, and then that negative or opposing thought, you can ask yourself, can I just let this go? But you also have to ask yourself, would I let it go? Because some of these thoughts and feelings, like I said, have been around for a while. And depending on what we're talking about, you may have even created a safety net around some of your limiting beliefs. So you have to ask yourself, are you willing to let go of this thinking? Are you willing to try new thoughts and behaviors and, and get new results in your life? Are you really willing to do that? And whatever the answer is, accept it and be kind to yourself. Because if you find that you're not quite ready, well, that's okay, right? Because then the next question you can ask yourself is when, right? So if it's not right now, well, when will you be more ready to do this? What else do I need to do to prepare? Um, it's just, you know, it's an invitation to let it go right now. Some of you are going to be ready to do that, and others may need a little bit more time. All right, so that's the process of removing limiting beliefs. Um, it's really just your opportunity to get out of your own way. And it's time for a lot of us, if not all of us, to consider that in many areas of our life, right? And if we could stop our limited thinking and, and replace our limiting beliefs, we could move, out, move all of that out of the way and clear the path to live our best life. And so as we reprogram our minds with more empowering and positive thoughts, you're gonna change your perception too. You're gonna to change the way you look at things. And um, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at do change. So you're gonna see some things showing up in your life. Maybe they were there all along, but you're gonna suddenly see some new opportunity. So this is a really exciting opportunity to really create goals for yourself, whether they're short term for the next couple of months or more long term. You know, this is your time and this is your opportunity and it could start right now, it could start today. <clears throat> so, you know, just be prepared that it may be a little bit of a journey because sometimes we have to work on um, when those, those programmed limiting beliefs show up, we have to work on moving them out of the way. So I uh, would love to know uh, what your thoughts are. What I would say is next is just work on this exercise, exactly what um, we shared, I shared the four step process and it could be a limiting belief around anything. I mean, it could be around, uh, you know, your ability to run a business. It could be your ability to start a business. It could be your finances, your weight, your relationships. It could be anything at all. And, um, if you can identify a limiting belief, I would say, you know, the action steps this week would be to practice those, um, those four steps. So I'm going to come off of this, and I would love to know what your thoughts are or what you found to be helpful. This part of Monday Morning Mojo is always the best part because I, I've gotten some comments from people uh, who really appreciate hearing from you guys. So if you could, uh, you know, just share anything that was uh, important or helpful to you or what you might be thinking, we all appreciate hearing from you. Does anyone want to come off mute and say anything? Or in the chat? Hey, Michelle. Hey, how are you? Good. Um, so a couple things that 
I don't necessarily experience myself, but I see other people experiencing it is um, the difficulty in doing this. You know, if you're not generally positive by nature, I think that this is more of a struggle for you. Uh -huh. So I think that, but what you just said, you know, giving yourself permission to, you know, be kind to yourself through this process that it, it can be hard and acknowledging that and letting it move, you know, kind of in and out type thing. Yeah. I think that's where people give up, right? Once it, yeah. it kind of hits you there and you say, oh no, I can't do this. And then. Yeah. Which is why I suggested, you know, if, if you think that may be um, difficult is, you know, a lot of times working with a coach on this can be more effective. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want anyone to think that you wave a magic wand. You just say, okay, I'm going to think differently. And all of that changes. It is a process. And remember, I mean, depending on whatever it is, again, some of these limiting beliefs have been hanging out for a long time. And so it may take a little time to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Anna. How are you? Good. 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 I would say that, um, you know, although it's, it's something that, you know, your, your brain gets ruts, right? So when you keep telling yourself the same thing, that's just what you, you tend to believe. You don't think about anything else. And it is a process. I think one of the key things that you had said was asking yourself, am I willing to do this? And having that inner coach. So as you know, I'm, I'm a life and health coach as well. And I will actually tell my clients, when this belief comes in, remember what we talked about. Think of my voice, because sometimes it's hard for people to have their own coaching voice, because that coaching voice is not helping them. You know what I mean? It's telling them still that you're not good enough or you can't do this. So sometimes it helps to kind of connect it to someone else because that coach is still there to help you. Yes, I, I, I believe that's true too. I've had many people say, I hear you have a little voice in my head. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> you poor yep. thing. But no, I mean, it is true because they're, um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's like creating a different um conversation literally because they can hear a different literally. voice literally. yeah, yeah, yeah I literally. Tell people sometimes I will have this dual conversation in my head if anybody heard it they think I was crazy <laughs> yeah for sure yeah thank you for sharing that anyone else want to share I see Tracy hi hi good morning how are you good how are you good um so I've been with you since day one, and you've been extremely helpful in getting me centered and grounded. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, and typically I'm asked every year to take on some summer projects. And I'm also a nurse, so I work a camp during the summer, or I, you know, typically. And this year I really wanted to get focused more on me focus on my family and, and making that my priority. So when I at, was asked to do these special projects, I said no. When I was asked to work camp this summer, I said no. And I believe that, I mean, it was my vision that I've wanted to do this for the past couple of years, but I always got sucked in. And this class has really just empowered me to say no and no, it's okay to say no. And I just, I feel so much better. I have so much relief now that I know that I have the next two and a half months home with my kids and I can really get myself centered and grounded and have more family time and more um, fun time, which are two things on that wheel from, I guess the it was last week that yeah. we had talked about. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, you set Thanks. boundaries and you really like stood up for what was right for yourself. That's awesome. I did. Thank you. Thank Good. you, Good. You're welcome. You did the work. Good for you. <laughs> Jill, I see you have a comment here in the chat. I'm not quite sure I understand. Oh, once in a positive place. Is there a coaching coping suggestion with the other person who continues to be negative? Yeah, maybe. Do you mind telling me a little bit more about that? 
okay if you're in a work environment or a you know space that um negativity just prevails based gotcha. on others that's not anything you can control right so you know you can work on yourself to the cows come home and be as positive and, you know as possible but um any suggestions pointers or thoughts on uh when you're surrounded by negativity yeah i think that's a great question i can't imagine anyone uh, who hasn't had that experience so you're right you can only control what you do think and say right so that's number one and really I think stepping into that and realizing that you really have no control over the other person unless they're willing to see something different, right? Like if they realize their negativity is a problem and, and you're able to help them see, you know, an alternative in thinking, speaking, or acting, that's great, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. So I would say it probably it comes back on you as far as the responsibility to protect your own mindset. And I think that we all have to like learn how to compartmentalize that sometimes. And, you know, it, it is really standing in awareness because if you let your awareness down, then it's easy for that negativity to really affect you. So I think it's really about how you um, prepare for the work day. I don't know how often or much you work with this person if they're in your space a lot, then that's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more work. Um, if there's any way to limit your interaction with them, if that's feasible, I would suggest that. Um, and if it's really, um, again, you know, I don't know all the situation, but if it's really toxic for you, then I would say, you know, within reason and professionally to have a conversation. And I don't know how the negativity shows up exactly. So I, I'm, again, I'm just speaking right. kind of, you know, up here in a general way. But, you know, if, if there's a way for you to have that um, conversation to just say, listen, you know, I would prefer when we're working that we don't talk about this or we avoid that because it's just, it's just not something I want to get into. Um, so I would probably need a little bit more information to give you a specific tactic. But at the end of the day, it's really about how we just protect our own mindset. And you have to ask yourself, okay, so whatever this person is thinking, saying, or doing, do I really want to give them that much power that it affects me? Got it. Okay. Thank you. You got it. Sure. Anybody else have anything they want to share or ask? All right. Well, I see that it's 8.05, so I want to keep you too much longer from your day. Thanks so much for being here on a Monday morning with me. I really look forward to this. And um, I will see you all next week. And again, you'll find the recording on the Facebook page and some other resources that I'll share with you guys. And create a community there. You know, I, I see it starting where we're sharing, um, share your wins, share your um, opportunities. Michelle, congratulations on your new job. Thank you so much. Yeah, it came about suddenly and unexpectedly and I couldn't be happier. You know, awesome. it was one of those things as we're kind of talking about lim limiting beliefs that it's a little bit of a change in career, it, it, change in um, industry. I was doing the work, but my expertise, I'm moving over into banking from securities and, ah. and you know, I think as women, we tend to be more, um, unless we check all the boxes, we don't necessarily fit that mold. So I probably wouldn't have applied for this job, but a recruiter reached out to me. And yeah, it, it yeah, I'm really excited about it. So Good, thank you. that's awesome. Yeah. They recognized your transferable skills, right? And, and sometimes it does take someone on the outside looking in yep. to show us what we're missing. So that's awesome. Good for you. you. Yeah, Thank so you. continue sharing your wins, encouraging each other. Um, that's another vision I had for doing this was to create a good, a good community, a place where people could feel empowered, learn new things, you know, maybe have some awakenings along the way, and just really live life in a bigger, more positive way. Um, and, and in, a, in an impactful way so that you're seeing results, right? It's not just, I always say, it's not just sitting on the couch like, um, I'm positive. It's really like using that to take action to see great things show up in your world, which in turn does something for other people as well. Um, and that's really the goal is to, you know, think about how, how can we impact the world every day and even in your own backyard, just your own small way. So 
All right. Have a blessed day. Thanks, everybody. And I'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Anna. Have a good week. All right. You too.